didn't stop all the utensils from being ready. That didn't stop all the vessels from being ready. Yahweh says, Shlomo will construct the temple, but David got the vessels ready. Watch this. Ready? Refined gold, verse 18, by weight for the altar of incense. And for the pattern, oh my goodness. Uh-oh. For the pattern of the chariot of gold of the gold cherubim See, that's why you eyes had spreading open. out their wings covering the ark of the covenant of Yahweh. That's a chariot too. These plans laid by David, which were fulfilled in his son Shlomo, are plans of the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant. Brothers and sisters, slow down now. What is a chariot doing in the Holy of Holies? Uh -oh. <laughs> what is a chariot doing in the Holy of Holies? Look at verse 18. No traffic lights. David made the pattern. He prepared the Ark of Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, with the two angels. The gold cherubim spreading their wings over the, the lid, the mercy seat. Yep. But is the pattern that he made was said to be the pattern of a chariot. Yeah. <laughs> Remember before I told you, what, what did Yeshua do when he finished gave the sword in Israel? He drove right into the Kadosh HaDoshim. He drove right into the Holy of Holies. And so the Ark of the Covenant is symbolic of the presence of Yahweh. Whenever Israel marched, they marched with the Ark of the Covenant. Whenever Israel moved forward, they took out the Ark of the Covenant, and the Ark of the Covenant, carried by the Kohanim, carried by the priests, led Israel in their travels, in their wanderings. So it is symbolic, typical, uh, a shadow of the Shekhinah, the presence of Yahweh that is always on the move, somebody. Because we're, when we're in the presence of Yahweh, when we're going in Yahweh, as Brother Asper says, we're going, we don't stand still. When you're in the presence of Yahweh, it's as if the chariot of Yahweh is moving. It's as if you're in the back seat. And it's as if Yeshua is doing the driving. And it's as if the dispatcher is calling all the shots, but you never get to see the dispatcher. And so the Ark of the Covenant was patterned yeah. Come on. <coughs> Patterned and designed by Yahweh through Bezalel, yeah. given to Israel in the form of a chariot. Who said you can't have fun with the word? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Open your eyes. So wait a second. So Woo the holy of hope. Are you telling me, Rabbi, so that the holy of holies was where? The chariot was parked. That's exactly what I'm telling you. That's what it is. The chariot's really he parked among his people so his people would never be alone, so his people would never be on the outside looking in, so that Yahweh's love and his mercy would dwell in the midst of his people, yeah. Israel, yeah. even now, yeah. <laughs> even forevermore, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. He parked right in the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And that's why I said today he's parked right here in our midst. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He's parked right here in our midst. Forever where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them, saith Yahweh. Matter of fact, no one even got to look at the chariot. Except one man once a year on the Day of Atonement, Yom HaKippurim, the holiest day, the most set apart day of Yahweh's biblical calendar. I'm sorry to bother you and bug you, mister, but it ain't Christmas, it ain't Easter, and it ain't Ash Tuesday. Glory to you know who. <laughs> it is Yom HaKippur, the holiest day of Yahweh's feast, the holiest day of Yahweh's calendar. And one man got a chance to check out the chariot once a year. Yeah. All Israel's prophets got a chance to take a ride in the chariot. But the mystery of Yahweh is you could. Oh, 
You can ride in the chariot, and the chariot's not moving physically, but it's going fast forward in the spirit. Amen. That chariot never moved. It was in the Holy of Holies, and the Kohen Haggadol saw it once a year, came out to Israel and said, it's still there. <laughs> but in the meantime, all the people of Israel were getting put in the back seat and going on mere kavod with their eyes open, receiving visions and revelations and understandings from the things of Yahweh without the chariot having to move. Yahweh, here's the good news about being a disciple of Yahweh. He doesn't have to move to move you. He's in his people. He's with his people. He's among his people. He's set apart in his people. And he stands still and let Yeshua do the commanding. And when Yeshua does the commanding, you'll be driven in the Ruach, and he won't even have to move. That is called omnipotence. He is so powerful to move the things that he wants, to move the people that he wants. He himself doesn't have to move. He can just move you without moving. Is any of this making sense? Turn your neighbor and say, it's making a lot of sense. I'm telling you what, I'm fired up. Yahweh parked among his people. What is the good news? What is the Bisharot? What is the kingdom of Yahweh all about? Yahweh doesn't want to just check you out. He wants to what? Park himself next to you all the days of your life. For mercy and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Justice and mercy shall follow me. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll live in the house of Yahweh forever. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I'm telling you what. So it says here that David put that ark and that the ark was made in the likeness of a chariot. Amen. Now wait a second though. Wait a second. There's more. Turn your name and say there's more. There's more. There's more. There's, more. there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So how did Yahweh go from Mount Sinai to the Holy of Holies? Chariot. Who did he take with him? A whole company of angels. Why are the cherubim on top of the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant is his chariot. That's how he gets around in front of his people. When they were on the move, he when, when, when he was on the, when Israel was on the move, he led his people. But when they settled in the land, he dwelt among his people. When they settled in the wilderness for 40 years, he dwelt among his people. So whether Yahweh is moving his people or dwelling with his people, the chariot of Yahweh is there to open your eyes and receive revelation. The chariot is willing. The driver is willing. Ha! The dispatcher is willing. Ha! Are you and I are willing to have our eyes open? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. First Kings 8.8. <laughs> First Melachim, 8-8. Eight, eight. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See what happens when you join the Begged Boys? <laughs> First Melachim, 8-8. Eight, eight. My, my, my. Mm. And the poles that extended, talking about the Ark of the Covenant, in the temple, the poles that extended to the ends of the poles were seen, don't miss this, from the set apart place, in front of the speaking plane, but they were not seen from the outside. They are there to this day. That means, listen, where was the Ark of the Covenant? Inside the Kadosh HaKdoshim, inside the Holy of Holies. What was inside the Ark of the Covenant? Aaron's rod that budded, the pot of manna, and the two tablets of testimony, the two tablets of Torah, the witness, yes. in the first temple, Solomon's temple. Yes. And so the ark was symbolic of everything that is Yahweh, the word, the spirit, the provision, the manna, all dwelling within and by his presence. And so the ark of the covenant was symbolic of his shekhinah, his presence, the mirkava of his presence. He chose to park among Israel. He did not choose to park elsewhere, which proves that Israel is forever his bride. He chose 12 disciples and said, in the rebirth, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel, showing that he still parks his, 
his, his Shekinah, his ark, his chariot in the midst of Israel and not another bride.